Well, Dr Cornel West has done it all. Harvard professor, philosopher, social justice pioneer. He even appeared in two of the Matrix movies. If he has his way, his next job will top the lot. President of the United States. As his Twitter announcement shows, he's ready for a fight. Do we have what it takes? We shall see. But some of us are going to go down fighting, go down swinging with style and a smile, accenting the best in you and trying to tease out the best in me. Let's do it together. Well, that actually makes me want to vote for him immediately. Dr. Cornel West, the Green Party residential candidate, joins me from Orange County in California. Dr. West, what a pleasure to speak to you again. My dear brother, I appreciate you having me here, and it's been a long time. I a long call time. Those wonderful days with Brother Tavis in the dialogue, but God bless you and your loved ones. Your well, precious family. I've got to say, you've aged better than I have, uh, and I, I've got to say, if all else fails, Dr. West, you will always have a job doing the intro to my show each night with that voice. <laughs> we both are blessed that we'll st we are still here in our right minds, or oh, brother. This world is uh, quite a place to be right now. Well, let me joys, ask you. Let me ask you about that. Actually, uh, just off the yeah, top, yeah. what do you yeah. make of the state of the world? We've gone through a very uh, disastrous pandemic, a, a cost of living crisis we haven't seen for many decades. Uh, we've had some appalling racial uh, situations like the George Floyd murder. Uh, we've had, obviously, a war raging in Ukraine now, in Europe again. W where are we as a planet, do you think? Well, I'll tell you the truth, brother. The history of the species is one in which we're so wretched. It's too many forms of domination, too much hatred, too much greed. But we always have moments of interruption. We try to broaden those interruptions with love, justice, deep integrity and solidarity with poor and working people. So, I, you know, we can read the great Lawrence Stern, uh, we can read Cervantes and see, oh, my God, we've always been such a wretched species. So much, so much ugliness, so much overwhelming suffering, and yet they will not have the last word. That's where courage comes in. That's where compassion comes in. That's where democracy comes in, my brother. Is there a lack of moral courage in world leaders right now, just generally? Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. No doubt. Not just leaders, but I think too often you get uh, um, professionals and educated people who are so obsessed with material success and they give up on moral and spiritual greatness. Mm. You know, and I know that... Uh, you know, the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and Rabbi Heschel and Dorothy Day and in your own country, R.H. Tani and Stuart Hall and Jacqueline Rose. I mean, these are truth tellers who cut against the grain. No one's perfect, but we need exemplars of genuine compassion and courage that goes far beyond just obsession with money, status, spectacle, and image. But we live in a world in which everything's commodified. Everybody's for sale. Everything is for sale. The superficial and the surface replace the substantive and, most importantly, the courageous. So, yes, it's, this, it's a lot of spiritual decay and in the United States. we got Trump leading us towards civil war, Biden leading us toward World War III, connected to Ukraine and China. We need voices. Get beyond the hatred. Get beyond the revenge. But look at the world through the lens of those Franz Fanon called the wretched of the earth poor and working people. I don't care what color or country or sexual orientation or gender. I'm talking about their humanity. And too often, the organized greed at the top is leading us to destruction, my brother. You've been uh, very powerful, I have to say. You've been very outspoken about Ukraine. Uh, you want to see peace uh, in that uh, war. But how does peace look like if you're Ukrainian? You've had Vladimir Putin illegally invade your country, a democratic country, seizing land which belongs to you. How is there any peace to be achieved if Ukraine, in my opinion, quite rightly, don't want to give an inch of any of this land to the Russians? Well, one, I think we always begin with solidarity with the suffering, and that is the suffering of our precious brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. But we have to understand this in the larger backdrop, brother. You know and I know that the United States promised Russia, they would not move one inch toward Russia. 
by means of NATO. Now 13 former countries associated with the Soviet Union are part of NATO. There's missiles targeting Russia right near the borders. You know what I know again. If there were missiles in, in, in Mexico and in Canada who were operated, sponsored by Russia or China, the United States would blow, blow them into smithereens overnight. That's how empires function in that regard. So that, yes, that invasion is criminal. Yes, that invasion is wrong and immoral. But at the same time, NATO, as an instrument of U.S. global power and imperial policy, pushed them against the wall. They did have a, they were close to a ceasefire agreement in March of 2022. And yet the United States did not give the green light. So we've got to really but be But just honest. to pin you down on, on my question, yeah. how do they now do a peace deal that doesn't involve Ukraine giving up land that they are determined not to give up? Well, no, once you have to cease fire, my brother, and you got to bring in the Chinese, you got to bring in the African leaders, you got to bring in the Ukrainians, you got to bring in the Turks, those who have played a role in trying to promote the cease fire, you then move through diplomatic processes so that there's fairness in the diplomatic process. But you've got to stop the fighting, you've got to stop the war, and it becomes more and more a proxy war against America and Russia on the way to nuclear exchange, on the way to World War III. This is madness. We've got to be able to have constraints in this regard. But yes, you're right. The suffering of our precious Ukrainian brothers and sisters is very real. And that's one of the reasons why it's got to stop immediately. $120 billion of U.S. taxpayer money already gone there. And of course, as Martin Luther King used to say, that the, uh, the bombs dropped in Vietnam land in ghettos and reservations and poor working class communities of any color. So the military expands and we get pulled back on social services, social programs for the poor, not just in the United States, but unfortunately, this is more and more true around the world, my brother. Dr. West, I could talk to you for hours, and I'm sorry, we've run out of time. I want to wish you all the best with your campaign because the campaign, the race needs somebody like you with your intellect, with your passion, I think with your moral courage and your honesty. Uh, and your conviction for things. I've always enjoyed talking to you. I have again tonight. Please come back on again soon. I appreciate it. No, uh, you call and I'll definitely be back. But you stay strong, my brother. Good to see you, Dr. West. All the best. All right, though, man.